Hello again, beautiful people. Welcome or welcome back. As you can see, my intro is still missing. That is because my laptop is still in the shop. I'm picking it up sometime next week. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm just getting a new one because the amount that it was going to cost to fix it just, you know, didn't make a lot of sense to me. But anywho, I wanted to do a quick updated completed, I say completed because I still have like four pages left, but completed flip through because this is something that will require minimal, if not no editing. I can just do it like real time. So here we go. Um, if you are a returning subscriber or if you follow me on Instagram, you're probably noticing my new cover. This is the July leather from the Sojourner subscription service. It's called Sewer's Cove. I think it's that's how you say it. Um, it is just a beautiful metallic teal turquoise leather. Um, I've mentioned it before, but I will say it again. I love turquoise, teal, mint, that whole color family. Those are my absolute favorite colors. So when I saw that somebody posted theirs, I was like, I need this cover. So I emailed Sojourner and was able to order it in an A5 folio. I believe they still have some of the leather available. So if you are interested in getting this, shoot customer service an email first just to make sure that they have enough available or like left over for your size notebook and they'll like instruct you on how to order it because you can't buy this directly from the site but anywho um oh real quick in case you were interested um this is my chic sparrow avalon it's in their express line this particular color is discontinued, but just so you can see like the difference in the shades and just the vibrancy, this is just gorgeous. Anywho, so on to what you came to see. I am journaling, or this journal here is a Taroko Shop, Taroko Shop uh, design. A5 notebook in their 68 GSM Tomoe River paper. I don't remember what this particular insert is called because it's not the thicker one. It's like the half sized one. But yeah, I've been buying inserts from them since like 2017. It's like my all time favorite. But okay, so here's the inside parts. We got some random stickers, picture of me and hubs. All right, here we go. So whenever I do a journal, I do like to put like the day of the first entry and then the date of the final entry in the front. So that way I know like what, uh, around what time period or what time range this, the insert is. I like to start every journal with the year and these, I use the same, the same exact numbers and they're from Courtney Diaz over on Little Raven Inc. Which by the way, on in my journal, 99% of the ephemera are going to come from the same creators. So my stuff's going to come from Courtney Diaz, a Little Raven Inc., Pam from Pocket Journal Pam, Jen from Genie May June, Lydia from February and June, uh, Kayan from Kayan, Kayan Asherman, and I think it's from Victory Road, I think is what her Etsy shop is. Um, and, oh, and Susie's Little Desk. I'll try and link them all down below. But yeah, that's where all of my stuff's going to come from. A majority of them. So here I have... Um, a currently inked. I do this periodically throughout my journal so that way I can know what shade of ink or what color ink is in which pen and this kind of helps me choose what pen I'm going to use to write the entries in and I update it as I go. So 
This here is a, the calendar image from Courtney Diaz. And then I put a sticker on every day that I journaled because I did move to an undated, which means that I don't journal every single day. So <laughs> I love, 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 love these like monthly pages. So I got this idea from Courtney Diaz. She does like a photo a day. And I just ran with it this year. I've been having a total blast setting these up and just like filling them up and just looking at it as like a monthly snapshot. It's just great. And then this also helps me when I have to backtrack in my five year for my Hobonichi because this kind of just gives me like, um, you know, a little reminder of what it is that I did that day. This is me trying to use watercolors again. I went on like this whole journey on um, trying different notebooks and seeing how different like mediums work on it. And so I kind of stopped using my watercolors as much. So I'm trying to like get back into it. This here was a tip in that I made. I don't usually put the originals. I will make scanned copies of them and I save the originals in a separate box. Artistic Cat. So Artistic Cat was an Etsy shop that sold half pans of Daniel Smith watercolors, but they, Daniel Smith kind of like cracked down on that and stopped letting people do that. So she had to close her Etsy shop, which meant that she had to get rid of her stock. So I just purchased a bunch of Daniel Smith watercolors for super cheap. Now, I didn't swatch them the greatest because, or at least there, because I redid it in the back once I actually got them delivered. Because this was from the dot card sampler thing that you can buy from Daniel Smith. And so I re-swatched them in the back. And you can see, like, there's a huge difference. But yeah, I got these for, like, super cheap. And now I have just, like, a bunch of Daniel Smith watercolors. But anyway, this was me like planning out what I was getting. And then this was my new Chic Sparrow cover for my Hobonichi A6 five year. It's in the uh, the Dark Scout. This is the Dark Maverick leather. And then this here is like a funny meme my husband made. Because yeah, that happened. Mm, I think, oh, I did this one on camera. Not a huge fan. I kind of regret using the colored inks, the fountain pen inks that I did here, but you know, you live and you learn. Picture of me and my mom. She's so pretty. And then I ordered my first, uh, or I placed my first order from Pam's Etsy shop. And so this is the cute little note that came with all of the goodies. I'm not like super, how can I say it, like impressed with a lot of the spreads that I did. I'm still trying to like get back into my creative flow. Um, here, it was my first order from Julia K on Etsy. She does like handmade watercolors and Pam over on Pocket Journal, Pam mentioned her and I love her stuff. So like I make it a point to order one or two half pens every month to slowly build my collection and this was the four or these were the four that like started all of that making little like paper dolls this adorable cup that i got pam also got she i got this because pam she got the female version of it and i thought it was freaking adorable and because we live in the same area I went out and I bought one as well. And I love it. It still holds all of my watercolor brushes. This was February. This is when I tried that um, journal fodder challenge where I only wanted to use my own stuff. So this is where it started. This was definitely, it was definitely a challenge. Oh, 
I like to, um, I don't usually show them or talk about them, but I like to use Snapchat for one reason, and that is to use the filters to take ridiculous photos like this. And so half of the time, if you see like sticky notes like this, it's either because I'm covering up some personal journaling or because I'm covering up a silly photo like that. But yeah, um, this was, like I said, when I um, challenged myself to just use only my own stuff. And that was very difficult, very difficult indeed, but I had a good time. I carved that stamp and this too. Here I was watching, um, there was a show on Amazon that I really liked based on a Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons group. What was it called? Um, okay, I don't know. Anyway, but I really liked that one character, Scanlan. So he was just like a very promiscuous little guy who was a bard and hilarious so I loved any time he was like Scanlan's hand so that's what that is and then that was the end of the challenge and now I got to use other ephemera pieces and stuff this page I really liked mainly because everything is very cohesive the shades of green ever so often I'll get a page like a spread that I really really like this was a good one too I made the body out of, uh, I think I'm, uh, it was a, from a Flow magazine. I ordered, so I made a friend here in Germany who really likes Shrek, and fun fact, I also really liked Shrek. In middle school, I would come home every single day, at least in the seventh grade, I would come home every single day and watch Shrek. So there was a point in time where I could quote, the entire movie from beginning to end and so when I heard that she liked Shrek 2 I found a little 3d printed Shrek Buddha on Etsy and so I ordered her one and it came in that day and it was freaking adorable and hilarious so I actually been thinking about ordering one for myself an updated currently inked page with my Twisby Ecos March. I think I did this one on camera. So sometimes like if I'm, if I want to journal, but I don't really know what to do, I will just flip through pages that are already completed and add stickers or just like random things. So yeah, my journal is constantly being worked on. This, I had wanted to write my review of the Batman of Robert Pattinson, but I just never got around to actually like writing it. In case you're interested, I did not like that movie. And there's a long, long list of reasons why I did not like it. I seem to be in the minority of people that did not like this movie. Um, yeah but I never like I said I never got down to writing at all I just was not a huge fan this was mine and my husband's anniversary I made another little art doll my sorority sister's baby shower this was one of my last I think I had this is one of my last purchases from Chic Sparrow. I purchased another notebook after this and I just was very um, disappointed with the quality of it. So yeah, I will not be purchasing, I don't think, from Chic Sparrow um, in a while, if not ever again, actually. So this is one of my last ones. Battle Birds. Hubs found these little like gachapon things on eBay and they're birds with humanoid bodies in like fighting poses so he bought the whole set and they came with 
a little paper with these images and so I turned them into stickers. I had a really weird dream here. If you've seen, I think it's Over the Garden Wall on HBO. It's got Elijah Wood, who's the voice actor for the main character. It's a great show. It is kind of creepy, but like aesthetically pleasing and just like quirky and random. It kind of felt like, you know, if you ever watched regular show, like the episodes start off normal and then they get really weird randomly but you don't hate it. So it's, it's good shows like that. Anyway, but I had a dream about the pumpkin head guy. And so I wanted to write that down and I hadn't watercolored in a while. So this one, I think I did do on camera possibly. I really liked this spread. I liked how the colors played together. This one I also really liked, but I never wrote in it. So I don't know if I'll go back and fill it in with something. It's there. Same thing for this one. Now we're moving on to April. April was a good month. Hubs and I went to Dusseldorf. I think this I did do a video on. And then Efteling, I know I have a video on this one our trip to the Netherlands. I fell in love with this theme park. So I'm, Hubs and I talked about like possibly going every year because it's just, it's just a really great and magical place. So, trash boys, ruining photos for people. And then this was a spread that I did about this farm in the Netherlands. They're like, they make clogs. They're a dairy farm. They make cheese. So you go and they, they do a tour and they show you a clog making demonstration and they show you how they make their cheese and then they do a cheese tasting. So I had all of my favorite things all in one place. I got to play with cows. I got to feed cows. I mean, what else could you ask for? Here was, I hated this page like so much. I um, had a vision because whenever you use a gachapon, gachapon is like a vending machine, but they have like cool little trinkets in it. And typically whenever you get one, you don't know what it is, but it'll come with a little paper that tells you all of the ones that you could have gotten in that series. And so I envisioned making like a border with all of the ones that I did get but it just it was too busy and then I kept working on the page to try and make it you know to try and fix it and yeah nothing nothing worked and I still hate it but you know I'm just gonna accept it for what it is uh we did Kuchenhof to see tulips in the Netherlands that's like a huge thing that everybody talks about like see the tulips tulip season I was not super impressed with this particular place it all felt too like I don't know I think I just expected like fields of tulips and it was just designated little areas and little patches and while yes that's pretty it just wasn't what I was expecting here on this day we went to the Body Works Museum which is, is a museum where they have, I think it's over 200 bodies. It's either 100 or 200, but there are people who donated their bodies to science, I think. And then they are, go through some kind of process and they're like just on display. And I don't think it hit me that they were real bodies until I was actually there. And I just kind of like panicked and did not enjoy myself. So will not be doing that one but i did go to or i should say i did enjoy the van gogh museum which was probably one of my favorite things was just seeing the development of his art you know hearing about his inspirations and his life and just being able to see his work up close it was by far 10 out of 10 would do 100 percent 
As a matter of fact, my really good friend is coming to visit sometime soon, and that is one of the things that we are going to go see because I just, I love it so much, and she's a huge Van Gogh fan, so we will be heading our way back there sometime soon. This spread was about a random renaissance festival that happened in my neighborhood. So it was like a two minute walk from my house pretty much. And um, yeah, we went and my husband and I, we love renaissance festivals. So we had mead, we played this like boat game that was for kids, but I mean, whatever, we had a good time. That's where I bought this really beautiful ring. You've probably seen it in a lot of my videos. I collect silver rings. So I do this thing where if, if I ever go to like a craft fair or just any kind of event or fair, if there are local um, jewelry makers, I will buy a silver ring because I like to one, support local artisans, but also I just think that having something handmade from someone is just so, so special and just knowing that like they spend hours practicing their craft and putting it together, you know, just beautiful. As a matter of fact, this ring I got in Belgium from someone who had been making silver jewelry for 30 years. And it's just, it's stuff like that that makes the, that to me, it very unique. So if you ever see like rings on my fingers, aside from my wedding bands, they are all from pretty much from festivals and local artisans and stuff. So that's what this page is, back to the Renaissance Festival. And then on this day, I did get my first happy mail letter from Jen for her Patreon. This is just a little catch up. Moving on to May. So I attempted to do the whole like one thing I'm grateful for on this side and then like using the other side to collage or put pictures or draw and it just I did not keep up with it which means that I have like these pages that are blank so I just decided to use them for like sketch practice to fill up the pages here we are in May that's my dad. He's hilarious. Um, this is just a little tip in I made. We went to another Renaissance festival that was, I think, the following weekend at a different town that was close by. And that's where that is, where that was taken. Yep, Renaissance festival. Here I started, well not started, but I started writing about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, which was very, very popular. This is me practicing or doodling, not practicing or doodling, swatching my stabilos on brown paper. And then here these are, this is a stamp that I carved and I just put that on neon paper. And then around this time in June, this was when I had to fly back home for a family emergency. And so I did not, one, I didn't take as many photos that month and I also didn't journal. So this was actually a pretty blank monthly spread that I filled in with stickers and dates and stuff. And I just, I this is like my favorite monthly spread because I love how even though there aren't a whole lot of photos, it still feels very full. And I think it's because I tried my best to do like, to stay in the same like color scheme. So I have a lot of greens and yellows and blues. And I think that's what helped to make it look very cohesive. But just, yeah, I love how this turned out. So this page I had actually set up before I left back home. So some of the stuff doesn't really coincide with what I'm journaling about, but 
that's okay. I started a jigsaw puzzle. And then this is July. Kind of like the same thing with July. I didn't really journal a whole lot because, you know, I had to fly back to the States um, for a week. So I, one, wasn't in the right mindset, but I also wasn't, um, it just wasn't the right time to journal. So I didn't. And now here I am in August. And you can see I didn't do a monthly layout for August because that's actually going to go in my next insert because this insert's pretty much already done and August is still like we're at the start of August. So a little journal catch up. This is from the prompt from uh, Lydia over in February and June. She's doing like this whole week, like a week of senses. So every day it's a prompt and each prompt relates to one of the five senses. So the first one was taste and it was breakfast. I didn't have breakfast that day. I had like an, an early lunch, I would say. So my breakfast was pizza and wings. Very, very much you know, my diet, like I eat like a college student still. Um, so here I am kind of just uh, catching up. My husband and I did take, so we got home at the beginning of July and we spent that first week recuperating. Second week, he had a long weekend, so we decided to go to Belgium. And the day we got back, we had to make arrangements to fly back to the state. So I didn't have time to journal about this. So I actually just did the sat down and did this yesterday. Um, yeah, we went to, we stayed in Bruges and we took the train to Ghent and Brussels to just kind of like explore a little bit. So the first day we got there, we drove six hours and then we we got chocolate from this place, which was awesome. And then we did a beer tasting and then we did a night walking tour of the city. And our like tour guide was amazing. She was really funny. She's lived in Bruges her whole life. So she had a lot of like really interesting tidbits about the, the city. And she even brought her adorable dog with her who was just like so much fun to watch. And that was really long. That was like a two hour walking tour. And then it ended with a free beer from like a local bar. So yeah, day two. This was the day that I inadvertently planned around liquids. So we did a canal boat tour. We had hot chocolate from this place called the Old Chocolate House. And what makes it unique is they give you like this big mug full of warm milk and you choose what flavored chocolate you want. And they'll, they give you like, I think I have the picture here. They give you like this setup with, it's like a little chocolate bowl filled with tiny pieces of chocolate and you add however much you want to your mug of, hot milk and you whisk it in and so you get to decide like how intense of a flavor you want so we did canal tour hot chocolate and then we went to the basilica of holy blood which is a church in bruges that allegedly has a vial of jesus christ's blood um my husband and i are not religious in the slightest but this was something that we were like well we should see that just to say that we saw it. Um, so we did that. And then we had soup for lunch at a place called Soup. So funny thing is I hate soup. I planned the day, I picked the restaurant. I don't, honestly, I was just thinking like it's an affordable place for lunch and I chose it. Yeah, I did, it wasn't until I was sitting there, I was like, why did I choose this place? I don't like soup. But yeah, this was like all liquids all day. It was, yeah. And then we ended the day with a waffle and uh, we went to a torture museum, which kind of just like went through like the history of like criminal punishment and stuff. Um, 
yeah, people were really messed up back then. That's all I'm going to say about that. And then this is a photo we stumbled across, like there was a random market going on. That's where I got this ring. But there was someone who made ceramic figurines. And so she made like little animals and a lot of them were playing like instruments. So there was this turtle playing a piano. There were owls playing the guitar, you know, it was just really random. Um, and then this day I did not finish just yet. This was the day that we went, it was on a Sunday. We went to, we took the train to Ghent and then from Ghent to Brussels and then from Brussels back to Bruges. Um, a lot of people say to go see Ghent. Honestly, I can't say that I was a huge fan. We went because we heard there was a festival, but we thought like it was going to be like in our, you know, like a, like a craft festival almost like, you know, just like a lot of local vendors and stuff, but it was more of like a carnival festival. So there were like carnival rides and carnival food, but it had been going on all week. So when we got there, there was trash everywhere. It just smelled like human waste. <laughs> it was just really gross. The city just did not look pretty at all. Um, I don't know if on a different day I would feel better about it. Like if I would like the way it looked more. But honestly, I was not impressed with Ghent and I would not go back. I would not recommend it either. It wouldn't be, you know. Brussels, on the other hand, was beautiful. Like... I took pictures of the town square, but it does not do it justice. Just how, how just it, I don't, is just so awe-inspiring, I guess. Like it was just these tall, tall buildings that were so intricately designed in this huge courtyard space. And you're just surrounded on all sides. There's these beautiful buildings. It was just, yeah absolutely gorgeous i would go back to brussels and then that is it see i only have like so i have these and then i have this page that i have set up for the final day like our day traveling back and then i'm going to do a page on like the little things in our hotel um because yeah there were little things that just were really strange about it that i want to write down because i think they're interesting and then i only have like three pages after that. Originally, I had wanted to put on this spread, my goal was to read one book a month in uh, 2022, but I got really into reading and I ended up reading almost a book and a half a day. And it just, there was no way that I was gonna be able to document that. So that's why this page is blank. Here I was just swatching, and whenever I whenever I get a new journal, I do I do like to get it with um, dot grid or grid. I do not like blank notebooks or lined. I hate 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 lined notebooks for journaling. But what I do is I will number how many boxes go across and then down so that way like if I am doing a spread that requires me to like count like this is what I use watercolor swatches my Tombows this is not all my Tombows I thought that I was done and I was never gonna get another Tombow but I fell right back into that hole and when I was in the States Michaels had them half off so I ordered I bought a couple more sets so this is just like I think half of what I own, it's just too many, too many, but that's what this is. Um, more swatches. This is also a page that I do in every journal. I have a page that I made it designated, <clears throat> sorry, designated for like washi scraps. Whenever I use like washi tape, any leftover pieces will go on this page. And then this is just because I use fountain pens, sometimes when you like switch the inks, you kind of have to scribble with it a little bit to get the ink flowing. And so that's what this page is for. And that's it. That is the end. Whew, my really long-winded 
um, flip of my journal. And that's it. So guys, I am getting a new MacBook probably next week, fingers crossed. Not sure yet. Um, so in the meantime, I might just try and do a few more like real-time videos like this. I had thought about doing a real-time journal with me, but it takes me so long to journal that it would be a really, really long video unedited and I don't think anybody wants to see that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try and just stick to videos that I could just do like this in the moment, like real time. As awkward and as difficult it is for me, I think that's what I'm going to have to do for a little bit. But anywho, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Y'all have a good one. Bye.